we're going to talk to David Curtin, leader uh, of the Heritage Party. David, a very good morning to you. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Mike. Great to be with you again. Yeah, now listen, um, just because it's a party conference season for the Tories and the Labour Party and the Lib Dems, we thought, well, we can't just forget about everybody else. So you guys have got a conference coming up. So I ran into you the other day in the TV studio. I thought, why don't we get David on to tell us what he would do about the energy crisis? Because I saw you tweeted the other day about a list of things that we should do, all of which made pretty good sense to me. Yeah, thank you. I mean, this is the big thing facing a lot of people. I mean, people are like being, being appalled at the cultural degradation that we had in the country over the last decade. But now it's really hitting the fan economically as well. And one of the biggest things is the net zero. Mm policy that the government has got but most of the other main political parties are following suit with this climate alarmism mm. and what we've had over the last seven or eight years is a dismantling of our energy system they closed down 11 out of 14 coal power stations yeah. which is terrible with no foresight as to what's going to happen when that energy just yeah. isn't there and they haven't replaced it with nuclear um they're, they're trying to replace it they say with wind and solar but that was obviously never going to provide enough energy to make up the shortfall well when, that's right it's yeah. extraordinary to me that they've allowed it's successive governments really and I, I, I think you probably have to go back even to tony blair's government where they've just allowed this the infrastructure of this country to degrade right so we haven't built yeah. any reservoirs so we can't store water we got yeah. rid of the gas uh, um, storage uh, facilities that we used to have under the north sea um we haven't got any nuclear we haven't got any coal uh, we haven't got any gas so apart from that it's going really well <laughs> right. I mean, we should be able to be self-sufficient in this country. And the fact that we're not, it's, it's just an indictment on all of the governments over the last 25 years, mm. as you say. It doesn't mm. matter what colour they are. No. Um, they've run the country down. I mean, it's, it's absolutely terrible. I mean, one of the first things you should do is basic, is make sure that your infrastructure stays in place to provide the basic needs that you, things you mm. need to survive uh, as people and as businesses, as a nation. But they've let that go. Yeah. I mean, all the other sort of things they've done on the top, I mean, are terrible, but this is your fundamental sort of core of the country yeah. has now got hot. So, you know, we need to act really quickly to sort it out, but I don't think they will do because they're still um, adhering to this net zero. Yeah. And they're still locked into the whole Russian-Ukraine thing, because one of the things that mm. I found interesting that you suggested, which will, some, some people will find controversial, you say end the sanctions on Russia, de-escalate the Ukraine conflict, and buy Russian gas for winter. Yeah, I've been saying that since the beginning. I mean, this was a conflict that never had to happen. People could have sat around and, and stuck to the Minsk agreements, which were put in place in 2014, but um, we didn't do that. And um, it, since then, you've got people all over the Western world, leaders, you know, including Johnson, including Trust, particularly in this country, are talking about prolonging the war, defeating Putin and so on, but and putting in place sanctions on Russia so that we can't buy their gas. Mm. We, we, we've sort of done it to our ourselves you know i mean it's not so much the case that you know we are going to suffer because we don't particularly buy russian gas that much but of course we're linked into the european energy infrastructure yeah. the gas infrastructure so if germany can't buy gas from russia they're going to buy it from norway which means there's competition for norwegian gas which pushes the price up here so you know what happens all over europe and they're all acting in lockstep together but what happens there affects us here in terms of energy but i, I think Think we need to take a lead in de-escalating the situation yeah. and getting back to normal ending the conflict which could be done quite quickly if there was the will to do it and then we could end the sort of energy crisis yeah. that we also not much, not much point in leaving the eu if we're still part of so many bits of it you know like the energy mm -hmm. process and the e echr and all the other things that we're still kind of loosely connected to the eu through um we haven't really left then have we yeah, well, we left politically, but I mean, <laughs> this is infrastructure. So, I mean, I think what we should do, we've got loads of gas under the North yeah. Sea. We've got loads of gas onshore. We've got loads of coal here as well. We've got oil in the North Sea. We could be completely energy self-sufficient with all the resources uh. we've got. Why are we getting gas and oil out of the North Sea and not using it all here? And then depending on buying electricity from France and, and, and buying gas from North way it doesn't make any sense we, we should have the vision to be self-sufficient yeah absolutely right um just got about 20 seconds left your your conference is on the 24th is it saturday 
That's right. I'm really looking forward to it. It's our first conference. It's going to be our second birthday as well. I can't believe it's two years since we launched. So it's going to be a really great day. Interesting. For people to get to great together. stuff. All right, David, listen, we'll talk to you again for longer next time. Thank you very much indeed. David Curtin, the leader of the Heritage Party, their conference coming up uh, on Saturday, the 24th of September.